back to Weapon Rant. Today we've got Return of the 8th Class Magician. Let's get straight into it. Yin Page is the greatest magician of all time, reaching 8th class, making him le nearly invincible. He fights wars for his emperor, Ragnar, winning them for him, killing so many people, and bloodying hands for the sake of winning wars. So, after it's all over, he returns to a lonely, lonely cottage in the middle of the countryside so that he can finish the rest of his life in peace, perhaps atoning for some of the sins that he had committed throughout the war. However, unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be. His emperor, Ragnar, poisons him, leaving him to die in a burning house because he feared his power. His closest friend, his the only person that the only reason why he had killed so many people had been afraid of him too. And so he's left there poisoned and dying in a burning house. However, luckily, Ian recently had been studying time warp magic, and he has a dagger. If he stabs himself with the dagger, he'll be sent back in time, although he doesn't know how long. Excuse me. And so he uses the dagger and stabs himself, killing himself and sending him back in time. Much, much further back, before all of the tragedies had happened, before he had committed all those sins, before he had become the lonely, most powerful magician of all time, Ian Fage, when he was just a normal village boy, before his mother had died. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the premise. Now, you could argue, you know, it's a typical premise. He gets tested, shows extraordinary talent, he co goes on an express train to become one of the most powerful magicians the world has ever seen, creating allies on the way, and atoning for his sins, and just, you know, becoming an awesome person, fighting evil, and trying to save the world. However, you may argue that, however, I will argue otherwise, because it's a typical premise, but it's so amazingly good. The characterization of the main character is perfect. Usually, in these kind of return or webtoons, the main character either becomes a cocky, OP, son of a bitch, bastard, or an ultra-serious, bloodless killer who hides his killing instinct behind a, a calibrated smile. But in this series, they describe a character whose power had led them to lose everything, who had used his powers to kill and cause harm, and that led him to nothing, to desolation, to, to death, to betrayal. He still aims to be really powerful, but there's such a powerful grief always tormenting him it really aims to show how lonely it is at the top of the world, and that characterization is so amazingly compelling. The plot of the story has its twist, which I also really liked. Mind you, they weren't anything revolutionary or special, but and you could argue that they were cliched. However, the execution of them with this character and the pacing was just so amazingly well done. It was like eating this really well cooked but really simple meal of of just salt and pepper a little bit of meat and a little bit of boiled vegetables except it's done so perfectly well that you feel really good even though it's not the most revolutionary or fancy or extremely tasty michelin chef dish you've ever tasted so I believe that this webtoon is very much worth reading. There's a lot of great action scenes, really good pacing, and the main character does some very satisfying things that are kind of more originated towards the power fantasy genre. However, this is not just a simple power fantasy. It's a tragic story about a man who had lost everything because he was simply too powerful. It's a story about a man trying to redeem himself of his past sins, past sins that had actually never happened, but he still feels them in his heart. And it's about a man who, who can't imagine falling in love because, because all he's done in his life, in his previous life, still torments him. And it's about a guy who's kind of getting over all of that. And this time, instead of being the alone, all-powerful person, making friends, making allies, helping people, he realizes there is value in that. And he realizes there's another path for him to take with all his power instead of war, death, and tragedy. 
and it's and that is the story of the return of the ace class magician and that's why it's so well done and i and i really really love the story i would absolutely reread this webtoon in a heartbeat it's also quite short as short and sweet i would say which i appreciated heavily 81 chapters is not a lot especially for a returning a returner webtoon even solo leveling had over 100 episodes however this is really really good so i'll give this webtoon an a tier for its masterful construction of character and really, really good pacing. Again, I would highly recommend this webtoon. It is super, super enjoyable. Even if you just want like a simple brainless action fantasy um, and power fantasy, then this is also the webtoon for you. However, if you're looking for something with a little bit more depth, something with a little bit more richness that is hidden within, then this is also the webtoon for you. So that's about it. See you later in another webtoon rant. Have a great day, everyone. Goodbye.